Welcome back to the Blue White Tailgate Show. Time to go inside the film room with Coach Jay Paterno. And you notice Steve Joe not on the set. You know why? Because he's not young enough and he doesn't have enough of hair to belong up here. But he's taking enough of shots at me during this episode. So, Steve, that's one for you. But, Jay, Army's coming in. We know all about the triple option. We're going to get to that in a second. But first, we're actually going to break down the defense of the Black Knights coming in here first. Absolutely. We want to take a look at both sides of the ball. Uh, their base coverage is what we call quarter, quarter, half. And that's something that's a little different than, than a lot of teams. Uh, Iowa and Ohio State, when Trestle was there, this was kind of their base coverage. And really what they want to do is they want to overshift the front to the field and really force you into a boundary game running the ball and force you to throw the ball out here to the field, low percentage throws. The key on this is the strong safety. Key's number two. If number two blocks, he's going to look to run support. If number two drags or goes in the flat, he's going to look to double up number, number one receiver out here. So that's really the key, and there's a lot of ways to attack it. Now, with a guy like Christian Hackenberg with a strong arm, they should have a very easy time throwing this ball out here and making some things happen. The other thing about this, this coverage is it allows you, as we go to the next slide, to adjust and make different changes. Here, very simple. You look at it, they just bring a guy off the edge, and they bring the strong safety down, and now they go from a from a quarter, quarter, half to a three deep where you see them run to three deep. We go to the next slide, and when you have some success now on the next slide, uh, you'll see that when you run the ball into the, into the boundary, now they bring the corner off the edge, they change up. That boundary corner is as much a run support guy as he is a cover guy in this scheme because he usually has help over the top. As we go to the video that we'll show you, you'll see how in this coverage you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one outside with the field corner. Here's a great job by Wake Forest taking advantage of that. And now we'll get to the Army offense. As you see on the monitor behind us, triple option is going to present a ton of problems. Penn State, you got to do a good job of reading your keys defensively because you need to identify actually where that football is. Listen, every, every athletic director loves to schedule Army because it's, it's kind of a neat thing to have a service academy. Every coach hates it when they see Army on the schedule because of triple option. Triple option football is assignment football on defense. You have a guy who's responsible for the dive, a guy who's responsible for the quarterback, and a guy who's responsible for the pitch. No matter what happens, they've got to take that guy. They've got to stick to the responsibility. When I was at the University of Virginia, when we would practice for option teams, George Welsh would often make that the defense practice without a football against the option so that this guy wouldn't get caught looking at the ball. They're going to take care of these things in the triple option, double down, Block down, and now he's got to take the pitch. Or excuse me, the dive. He's got to take the quarterback. He's got to take the pitch, and they block him. They're trying to create three-on-two opportunities. But that's not all they do. Go to the next slide, and we'll show you the loaded option. Now, on the loaded option, they make it a little simpler on the quarterback. They create a two-on-one by blocking the dive key, blocking the pitch key, and now the quarterback's going to get to the perimeter. Uh, at Notre Dame, Lou Holtz, when he had Tony Rice, loved loaded options because he would get his quarterback out to the pitch key. The guy would take the pitch, and now Tony Rice would, th would have the ball in his hands running. We'll go to the video and show you how this works. And you'll see now with Bradshaw at Army, now we don't know if he'll play or not, but you see he's a very effective runner, and if they can get him running, it's great. If not, he's going to turn and pitch that ball and get on the edge. You see right here they get a nice play on the edge here inside the 10-yard line. We go to our next slide now. And here's another two-on-one situation. They're going to double down here. They're going to block again. They're going to block the, the quarterback key the guy and the guy in the pitch key. And now the quarterback's simply going to isolate the dive key. When you go to the zone to the uh, video, we'll show you how this works. Now, when I coached with James Madison, this was one of our best two-point plays that we had because it really puts this dive guy in a bind and everybody else is blocked. You'll see that guy takes the fullback and Bradshaw follows him into the end zone for the score. We go to our next slide here, and you'll see the zone read that everybody's running in college is very similar. Wake Forest is just reading a two-on-one here. We go to the video, you see how effective that is. The only difference is now it's in the shotgun, and now it gives the quarterback a little bit easier look at it, and now he runs into the end zone. Penn State fans should be a little familiar with that look. Michael Robinson, tremendous at the read option with him and Tony Hunt in the backfield. But Army, they do struggle a little bit on the perimeter with some of their athletes. They do throw the ball, as, we've, as we will talk about later on with Steve on set, and you're going to show us one of those plays as well. Well, once they get you playing the option, and you, you have a tendency to think, okay, we got the option covered. And now, again, it's assignment football. So if you look at this one, this guy I've got right here, he's responsible for the pitch. So now they're going to come down the line, fake to the fullback. 
They're going to get the linebackers up. They're going to get him playing pitch. And now they're going to sneak the guy out that this guy would normally be covering in a straight pass. He's going to jump off the line. And now you got him on a wheel route. You got a post outside and you got him. And we'll take a look at the video and show, show you how that works. And you look at that outside linebacker at the top. He's going right to the pitch. The guy he should be covering is going down the sideline. And it creates a nice big play. And again, it's all assignment, but Army knows it's assignment. They get you to play your assignment. Now they sneak a guy out, and they may not throw it often, but when they do, you can get some big plays out of it. Yeah, and actually, if that ball is probably delivered a little bit earlier, it gives the fullback a chance to make a move and maybe bust one out for an even bigger gain and possibly a touchdown. Absolutely, and that's the thing Penn State's got to be ready to do is eliminate the big plays that comes not, come from missing your assignment. And if they stay on their assignments, they've got better people than Army. They've got better talent, but it should be, uh, it should be a good day for Penn State. But the key is going to be – getting them off the field so that Penn State's offense can make plays against an Army defense. Jay, let me ask you one question. There's injuries in the secondary for Penn State. Malik Golden got some time last week coming in for Allen. How tough it is for maybe, say, Golden, who hasn't played a lot of football this year, to be able to make that adjustment in just one game? Well, there's two things about the option that really drive you nuts defensively. It's hard to simulate in practice at uh, full speed. It's also hard for your defensive lineman to get used to all the low blocks. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a tough adjustment, but I think they'll handle it. Definitely. And guys, we'll talk to Coach Monkin coming up. He's probably the best guy that could break down the Black Knights. You're watching the Blue White Tailgate Show as we roll on right after this.